Hey, yo, what's good with everybody, man? I hope everybody's having a productive day, feeling a blessing like I always say. It's one live, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right. Let's get it done. With that being said, another video, another topic, another moral of the story. You know, I look at these stories sometimes, and I uh, even though some of them might be older and some of them, you know, some people are familiar with the story, some people are not, but I still try to find the morality of the story, and if I can extract a positive message from it related to the youth, related to the viewers... Hey, I do my best. So, let's get into this one. With that being said, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like. Always leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Check the links in the description for the Apple and Spotify music. Go ahead and run my streams up. Thank you guys for your support and thank you guys for tuning in. Now, it's been talked about plenty of times on my channel and a lot of other channels. Everybody knows the city of Salinas, California is very popular. You know, the salad bowl, the agriculture that's going on over there. But most importantly, prison politics that control those streets of California, of Salinas in itself. And when you think of Salinas, California, most of the time you think of Norteño Barrios, Barrios that, you know, are infested with Norteños, the population, very big. Norteños have the biggest influence on that, on that city. But it's always been a territory where, you know, the Black Hand does want to, you know, establish themselves and recruit members. Obviously, you know, you know how the Mexican Mafia works. They send Sureños from down south, up north. Create Vario. Sometimes you'll see uh, Sureño Vario's from up north representing Vario's that are from LA, but in these Northern Cali regions, infiltrating the streets of California. And obviously, the homies from Salinas don't like that. Now, regardless of the end of hostilities, peace treaty, there's not going to be a lot of peace on the streets. You're going to see it mostly within the penal system. That's just the way it works. The streets are too big to control. The fight's going to continue over territorial gain and power and money, greed, jealousy, envy, you name it. Big homies, both carnales on each side, Mexican Mafia, Nuestra Familia, they're going to fight for these territories. And we're going to continue to see a bloodshed, a rise in the bloodshed. Until these youngsters start thinking that, you know, sometimes there needs to be a bigger difference than it needs to be made. And just start putting the guns down and start realizing man, what they're killing each other over. Now, mind you, these Sureño neighborhoods have been known in the streets of Salinas, California, to go at it with Norteño hoods. And, you know, the, the reputation of Salinas, California, everybody knows and everybody can vouch for it. Norteños, unalive Sureños, Sureños, unalive Norteños. They've been beefing for many, many years since both have established territorial grounds. And it's just, an, it's, a sad, it's a sad reality that I, I'm familiar with, that I've been through, that I've actually took part in sometimes. When I was younger, that we're, you know, we're going to kill one another over these streets and over prison politics. There's nothing that's going to stop it. I think the damage is, is far beyond repair. It's already been done. People have a long memory and they tend not to forget these kind of things. These kind of aspects that, you know, when you bury your homie, this is what happens. But oftentimes when you think of Northern California, the narrative of the story is always Norteños, you know, smacking Sureños, doing what they got to do over territorial beef you want to believe that you know the northern cali regions belong to norteños and that you know sureños you know as the most popular statements always said all sureños ain't up north they're just hiding out they're never seen they're never out in the open well let's think again about that two sureños from salinas california were handed over 500 years at trial sentenced to over 500 years and life in prison without the possibility of parole for a shooting spree against Norteño rival gang members. Virgil Rodriguez and Francisco Garcia, 25 and 29, both got sentenced to 270 years plus 19 years to life for going on a shooting spree. A lot of attempts going on and shooting in broad daylight. In broad daylight, camera footage shows that these individuals were doing it in broad daylight. Now everybody knows broad daylight. That's when everybody's usually out. Back in my day, we I, we mostly slid at night. And if we caught one during the day, it was very rare. We do what we have to do, but sometimes we factored in like, all right, no, there's people out here. We'll catch them later. We'll catch them later. Nighttime when ain't nobody out, most of the time they're gonna be out smoking, drinking, partying, messing with the rucas. That was around my time in my area. Nighttime was when the gang members came out. During the day, we all trying to be inside. Like, man, there's so many cops outside, bro. Too many civilians. You know, I ain't trying to get beat up by no civilian, bro. I'll get beat up by a Sudanio all day, but a civilian, bro, that's a... Bro, the, the, the moment I hit him, bro, I got 22 charges pending after that. Assault on a good Samaritan. Assault against civilian. Uh, special wild against because I hit an 83-year-old man. Like, bro, I, I ain't trying to go, I ain't trying to battle those laws. I'll battle these laws. Gang enhancements, 
you know, rival gang uh, shootings. I'm cool with that back in the day. But it's all easy to go at it with a, with a regular civilian. And, and even if he instigated, even if he started it, and he punched you in the mouth first. And there's probable evidence and, and, and viable uh, video recordings that he punched me first. And I defended myself. You're a gang member. Get, get on the wall. Get on the wall. Hands against the wall. Take his pictures. Assaulting his man. He assaulted his man. Whatever you said to provoke him to hit you was a threat. Street Terrorism Act, all kinds of charges, bro. So, you know, I'd rather just go at it with another rival gang member. That's just me, though, personally. But it's said that these Sureños stole a vehicle and began all day in the beginning of the morning. Their whole objective that day was to look for Norteño rival gang members and kill them. Now, imagine that. Imagine what you had to do, what, what you had to tell yourself waking up today and just tell your homeboy just smoked out, just, hey, pass the pookie, fool. Pass the pookie. Hey, fool, you know what we could do? Hey, remember that Remember that, uh, that 93 Honda Accord we seen the other day? Yeah, who was the Honda? I fool, she don't need that car, bro. She stays at home anyways with her kids, fool. It's Jackie. The part that kind of, you know what I mean, kind of bothers me a little bit the most is that these individuals were adults and decided to recruit two minors under the age of 18, youngsters from their neighborhood, to show them and come with to go put in work to go on a mission. You know, everybody knows what going on a mission means. Like, we're going to go handle business. We're going to go put in work. So they grab these underage kids to go with them. So now they're in a vehicle of four individuals, all with straps, all with semi-automatic guns, looking for Norteños. And this is the message that I've been trying to show the youth for a long time. Is that you're going to have these older dudes who think they know better, who convinced you that they know better, who convinced you that what they're doing is right and what's necessary and what's expected of you, when that's not your expectations. You know, if you're younger than the older, let the adults do what they got to do. They're adults. They can make decisions for themselves and they can pay for their consequences. But as a youngster, we uh, a lot of these young kids need to finally grow up and realize, like, bro, I got to start thinking for myself because if I allow another man to do it for me, I'm just going to get myself into a wreck. And I'm going to place myself in a position where some, I might be facing that life sentence and there ain't no get backs after that. Now, they went to a trailer park on East Bolivar Street. They said it was a Norteño territory. Now, if the Norteños are out there formulating a gang and took over this barrio that was all trailers, damn. I mean, that's some hardcore gangbanging. It's like, hey, fool, let's go to the homie's trailer real quick. And then you can hop from the next trailer to the next trailer, run a train on this girl in this trailer, go smoke dope in that trailer, go cook the dope in that trailer. Trailer park thugging, bro. Trailer park thugging. Well, they pull up to this trailer park and they see three occupants in a vehicle who they identified as Norteño rival gang members. Pulled up right next to him, let off 11 shots. 11 shots at three vehicles. People were hit and people were injured during this time. Now, obviously, they jumped back into their vehicle and sped off, dumped the vehicle, and guess what they do? They look for another vehicle to jack. Obviously, somebody who's been working hard, who's been making their monthly payments and probably had insurance, probably didn't have insurance. Some people go their whole lives without putting insurance on their cars, just riding dirty. Jack somebody else's car and continued the mission while the cops and, and, and the law enforcement found that vehicle, was investigating this crime scene, taking these individuals to the hospital. They decided to continue on the mission and go start killing more Norteños. So they jack another car, continue on the mission, and they go to an apartment complex where they actually believed Norteño residents resided at. And obviously, they let off more shots emptying out their clips so obviously they made up they might have figured these individuals either were or they either let off in the, um in broad daylight just had a crowd full of people but either way multiple people were shot and hurt and injured overall two people were hit they said one of the one of the individuals was shot multiple times and that individual had to be rushed to the hospital and was placed in critical condition think about it this individual went to the hospital he was standing outside Probably having a good time, probably just went outside to smoke a cigarette or was partying, whatever the case may be. Car pulls up on him with four individuals, two adults and two young kids under the age of 18, minors at that. Letting off multiple rounds, he gets hit multiple times, rushed to surgery. After five surgeries, the bullet was lodged into his back. He survived the shooting, but he can no longer walk again. He's paralyzed from the waist down. Imagine that for a moment. 
you just stepping outside just on a regular day, having a great day, spending time with your family, your kids, your loved ones, just ate mom's good old fashioned lunch, you know, carne asada or a pastor, you know what I mean? Had a couple of brews, so I don't want to go outside real quick and just, you know, get out the house, smell some fresh air, look outside, look at my neighborhood, you know, enjoy the day and soak into the moment. And then a car pulls up and just shoots you. Yeah, some people might say, hey, yeah, well, he was a gang member. Eventually, he's going to have that coming. Some people don't. There's a lot of gang members who claim a hood, claim a vario, every once in a while jump somebody, but, you know, have never did nothing severe, nothing violent, nothing in his background that shows that, you know, people should be looking for him other than he's wearing a color and he's part of a neighborhood or he resides there. You know, karma is a bad thing. Karma is a thing that's real. But now he, he wakes up after, out of critical condition after five surgeries realizing that he can't walk again because some, some, cause some individuals decided to wake up one day and say, you know what, for the sur, for the trece, we're going to go out here and put in work and we're going to kill as many as we possibly can and just go to jail. That's the harsh reality of what's been going on since the beginning of time and the reality some of these youngsters are going to have to deal with if they continue to be influenced by adult males, adult gang members. Without the proper parental guidance at home or without the proper influence in their neighborhood, they're going to end up just like this individual. And these two minors wind up getting arrested because of these individuals. One of the youngsters, one of the minors actually got away, but the other three got arrested. The, obviously, the minor went to juvenile hall. The other, the other males went to county jail, facing a lot of attempted murder charges. The thing about it is that these individuals committed these acts. And in both acts and both shootings, there was surveillance footage on both crimes, both shootings. These individuals didn't even cover their face. Just did it in broad daylight, did it in broad daylight, dressed in regular outfits. Faces can be recognized, faces can be seen. So obviously they, didn't, they had that mentality where they didn't care about getting arrested or getting busted. They just wanted to go out with the bang. They wanted to represent their neighborhood, represent the idea that Sureños ain't to be messed with, that Sureños are out here in the streets of Salinas, California, killing Norteños. And it, this was a public example to set for these youngsters that they felt was necessary to say, we could do it in broad daylight, don't hide your face. There's nothing to hide from. There's nothing to be ashamed of. We're Sureños. This is what we do. And these minors are in the back seat just watching it all play out and end up in juvenile, looking at juvenile life. Well, the adults get sentenced to conspiracy to commit murder charges, attempted murder charges, possession of weapon firearms with special allegations. And both of them got sentenced to 270 years plus 19 years of life or nine years of life. It was something along those lines. And they're, poss they're possibly not going to get out. Like I mentioned many times before, if you're an adult, you have the capability to think and know what's right and what's wrong, what you want to do. If you decide to continue this lifestyle and throw your life away, then so be it. But I felt like within, within this story, there was no reason to pick up two minor juveniles, throw them in the back seat, ages 13 and 15, and just take them on a shooting spree with you. It doesn't show in the reports that these, these kids were the actual ones letting off, but still, you put two little kids that could have been in school, I could have been dating some girls and went out and just been with their girlfriends or been with their family. You know, we're talking about teenage kids that probably had a curfew. And you want to throw them in two stolen vehicles in the backseat just so you can show them how to put in work for the neighborhood. See, back then when I was young, 13 through 15, 16, yeah, I made my decisions. I paid for my consequences. I understand what I was doing was wrong. But there's going to be a lot of kids that don't. There's a lot of kids that are forced into this lifestyle, thinking it's cool, thinking they want to be cool. And some kids just don't got the heart and willpower to resist and walk away. So instead they do it just so they can be accepted. So they can join these gangs and be looked up to. To be something to be proud of. To be embraced by brothers. Be embraced by homeboys. Just to be accepted, bro. The things that youngsters do back in my days and, and today. Just to be accepted. Just to look cool. A lot of these young kids are losing their lives because of it. And that's something that we need to try to stop them from doing. Deter them from taking this route and just give them better options because these two adult individuals didn't give these kids no options other than get in the backseat, hold this weapon. If I tell you to shoot, shoot it. That shouldn't be this young generation's options to be putting in work. Let's give them a better future than what we had for ourselves. So if you got the capability to make your decisions, but stop a young one from doing his, you know, try to be the bigger man. You want to throw your life away? You want to continue to gangbang? You want to end up being dead or in jail? You make that decision for yourself. 
but don't start making that decision for others. You know, let's give everybody else a chance. If they want, if they have a chance, if they want a chance, or if they need a chance to change their lives. So with that being said, like I always say, it's one life, one chance. When you got one chance to do this right, let's get it done. Peace.